<coughs> Today we are going to complete the central dogma of molecular biology that is the synthesis of protein from the DNA. We started from the very first topic where we first replicated the DNA and then we make this DNA to become single stranded RNA and from this RNA we are going to translate this message from the rna into the language of protein that is th that process is called a translation and we are going to start this process with the help of genetic codes the letters a g t and c corresponds to the nucleotides found in the dna they are recognized or organized into three letter codes words called codons and the collection of those codons make up the genetic code it was basically impossible to understand protein synthesis or to explain mutations before the genetic code was elucidated after it becomes known that we have different codons for the synthesis of protons and for the synthesis of proteins uh, it is it becomes easy to translate the codons the message the genetic code in the form of amino acids so for 20 amino acids there should be 20 codons and there are some specificities for the genetic codons codons are a g c g a g c and u which are adenine guanine cytosine and uracil and the different characteristics or specificities for the genetic code are each genetic code is specific so the first characteristic is specificity it means it is unambiguous ke jo species jo specific uh, conserved sequences jin spe species mein hain wo unhi mein hi rahenge the second one is the universality यूनिवर्सल रूल है कि जिन स्पीशीज़ के अंदर ये हमारे मौजूद हैं वो उन्हीं के अंदर रहेंगे थर्ड वर्ल्ड दैट इज़ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज़ द डी जनरेसी और रिडेंडेंसी इट मीन्स दैट मैनी अमाइनो एसिड्स हैव मोर देन वन गुड ऑन एंड वी हैव मैनी अमाइनो एसिड्स विच आर गोइंग टू बी ट्रांसलेटेड फ्राम अ सिंगल ट्रांसफर आर एन ए द फोर्थ प्रैक्टिस stick is the it is non overlapping and commonless so this is a table of genetic codon where we take three amino acids in, in a consecutive order and it causes the formation of different codes and the characteristics are specificity universality degeneracy and non overlapping if there is a problem during studying the genetic code on we will face different types of mutations these different types of mutations could be changing in single nucleotide bases or changing in different or uh, more than one nucleotide bases if the change is uh, between the single nucleotide then three types of mutations will occur these are known as silent mutations missense mutations and nonsense mutations here you can see uh, uh, the middle diagram which is uca that is the codon for serine as series serine has more than one codon if uca is going to be altered by ucu it will code, code for serine also so this type of mutation will be called as a silent mutation and if uca is going to be converted into uaa that will be termed as a nonsense mutation because in place of synthesizing serine amino acid a termination codon reached and premature termination of protein synthesis occurs and missense mutation is going to be seen when uca is going to be replaced with cca as it is entirely different amino acid that is going to be added in the list of proteins so other types of mutations include nucleotide trinucleotide repeat expansions splice site mutations and frame shift mutations 
in this case we have in the, the the explanation of frame shift notations is the frame is going to be shifted in many diseases by adding or deleting a base in the middle of the codon of the messenger rna you can see serine proline methionine and alanine are going to be present in consecutive order if there is addition of a base after serine then the entire framework is going to be shifted if there is a serine of um, proline after serine then again serine is going to be added by adding a single uracil in that base which causes the formation or type of mutation which is known as frame shift mutation same happens in the case when a nucleotide is going to be deleted after one amino acid sequence which results in the deletion of one amino acid it results in the frame shift mutation by deletion and other types of mutation also includes trinucleotide repeats which is which would be seen in the huntington disease and other trinucleotide repeat expansion diseases what happens in a huntington disease we have trinucleotide repeats which are going to be repeated in the protein sequence of this disorder mrna is simply translated into huntington protein with abnormal glutamate residues means cag is going to be repeated 11 to 34 times in huntington disease which are then going to be cause the aggregated proteins which then accumulate in different areas of brain and different tissues causing abnormal functioning of proteins other types are seen in fragile x syndrome and myotonic dystrophies where in fragile x syndrome cgg is going to be repeated and causes the abnormal protein formation in fragile x syndrome and in myotonic myotonic dystrophy cug is going to be repeated and we will see different types of frame uh, different types of trinucleotide repeats causing huntington disease fragile x syndrome and myotonic dystrophies so keep in mind these are these are the exam uh, these question are very important according to examination point now moving towards the overall process of protein synthesis as in case of um, transcription protein synthesis is also completed in three steps called as initiation elongation and termination and many components of translation are there like we already make messenger rna transfer rna and ribosomal rna which are the basic components for the synthesis of proteins which is known as translation and different in energy sources are also required in case of initiation we need to know that methionine is the initiation codon for the translation and we have a sequence of codon in the messenger rna that is complementary with the anti codon sequence that is present in the transfer rna so keep in mind that translation is always going to be started with the help of methionine as the initiation codon some other components of translation process is amino acids transfer rna amino acids attachment sites anti codons amino acid transfer rna synthetases we will see what they are going to do as the name is indicating that amino acid transfer rna synthetase must have some energy sources in them and this energy source is going to be useful for the uh, energy purposes of this translation process and the third type of rna that is the compulsory component of translation machinery are uh, is the ribosome ribosome ha have a p and e sites on them so these all the sites are involved for the synthesis of overall machinery of translation moving towards the initiation step codon recognition is done with the help of wobble hypothesis that i have told you in the characteristics of genetic codon in terms of redundancy means only um, uh, uh, different amino acids are there for that code for the same amino acids so this is the wobble hypothesis and prokaryotic and eukaryotic 
initiation factors are different as in prokaryotes poly, uh, the transition machinery is work, work with the help of polycystronic mechanism and formylated methyl methionine is required for the initiation and the initiation factors 1 to initiation factor 2 and initiation factor 3 recognized as IF1 IF2 and IF3 are involved in the prokaryotic initiation of translation while in eukaryotes different types of eukaryotic initiation factors are involved and they are greater than 10 in number so in prokaryotic system we have different cons cons consensus sequences in the messenger RNA that th th those are called as the shine delgano sequences which are 6 to 10 base pair upstream of the AUG. AUG is the initiation codon. Initiation that is the codon for methionine. So upstream of methionine codon we have shine delgano sequences that is the recognition point for the synthesis or initiation of translation. Elongation involves elongation factors which are EFTU, EFTS and some other peptide transferases and these are in case of prokaryotes or eukaryotes have different types of elongation factors as well. We will see these the details of these factors in, in the upcoming diagram. Termination factors are called as the releasing factors which are just like the initiation factors are called as the releasing factor 1, releasing factor 2 and releasing factor 3. In case of prokaryotic organisms while eukaryotic organisms have only one recognition factors that recognizes all the termination codons. Initiation started from the very first step that is in this diagram that is from your lipid cord. Here you can see in the first here you can see in the first bullet initiation factors aid in the formation of 30s initiation complex the black line shows the messenger rna the green part is the ribosomal rna ribosomal rna have two components initiation started with the only 30s initiation complex and the uh, uh, Transfer RNA is going to take the formulated methionine as this process which is in your lipid cord is entirely for prokaryotic species and the charged initiation transfer RNA is going to be attached at the P site. Now recognizing the ribosomal RNA by three sites which are A, P and E sites. As I told you three basic components which are messenger RNA, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. Messenger RNA having the message that is going to be translated with the help of ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA. Ribosomal RNA have three subunits, subcomponents which are known as A, P and E sites which are going to be present in this ribosomal RNA and in case of transfer RNA, the work, working of transfer RNA is completed when it, when it is going to bring the anticodon for the codon sequence that is, uh, that is present on the messenger RNA. So in the second step, GTP on the IF2, that is the initiation factor 2, in case of initiation factor is hydrolyzed and initiation factors are released. When the 30S subunit arrives to form the 70S initiation complex. So here you can see uh, the first step is going to be converted in, into the second step when IF1 and IF3 are going to be released and IF2 with the help of ATP causes the attachment of largest ribosomal subunit with the smaller ribosomal subunits completing the machinery of translation. Moving towards the third step that is the elongation factor that directs the binding of appropriate transfer RNA to the codon in the empty A site and again energy is required. 
here in this diagram after two after two diagrams the third diagram showing that the second transfer RNA is coming at the A site and bringing anticodon for the next amino acid like if proline uh, phenylalanine is going to be added after methionine then the anticodon for the phenylalanine is on is on the transfer RNA so elongation factors are going to be in working position now as elongation factors have peptidyl transferase activity they are going to make peptide peptide bond with the two amino acids which are now the part of transfer RNA if the peptide bond is going to be made on the both amino acids then what happens next a process of trans location occurs what happens in the process of translocation the change of location or transfer of location of transfer RNA occurs in the fifth step the ribosome ribosome moves a distance of three nucleotides along the messenger RNA in five prime to three param direction here you can see what is on the P side now is on the E side and what is on the A side is now, now on the P side so A side is again empty to accept the upcoming amino acid in this way the upcoming amino acid is going to be attached at the A site with the, their anticodon and causes the formation of peptide bond between the thread of amino acids and keep adding the amino acid by forming peptide bond and new amino acid is going to be added keep uh, keep uh, uh, is uh, going uh, keep adding itself by the process of translocation the steps 3 4 and 5 are repeated again and again and termination codons are reached which are which are recognized with the uh, by the ribosomal rnas and it causes the release of ribosomal rna and transfer RNA from the messenger RNA with the help of releasing factor 3 that is going to utilize the GTP and causes the release of all the machinery and we, are, we then get the complete prepared sequence which was our target. So this is all about today's lecture from tomorrow we are going to complete or review this translation process again with some post-translation.